that our final game of the day will finally start again. And what we can say that some people might be already losing their mind over here online, you know, it goes like, oh my god, that's terrible, because now the other guy's gonna mind game him. Like, actually, <laughs> calm down, guys. I calm hope down. they use that voice. <laughs> <laughs> calm down. Both players actually have agreed upon the same opening, so we're not yeah. gonna see one guy go six pool against the hash first. They said, all right, we can't regame, but we will both open up with either the 14 yeah. or the 15 pool. I don't know which of the two it was. And from that point on, obviously, you're a free man to do whatever you that's want. That's all you can do. I mean, if you can't resume from replay, the most fair thing you can do is say, okay, well, you know, guys, because one of the worst parts about straight up regaming is both players then enter into this weird Mindset. storm of mind games where they're like, well, now he knows what I was doing and was super safe, but but is he going to change it up or am I? And you don't want to, you never want outside elements like that to come in and affect the game. You, you want to try to avoid that at all costs. So in this case, both players say, okay, let's both open up very conservatively. And then from there, it becomes a new game. So we will see spawning pool. For, actually, this would be kind of crazy, Kevin. We can call so things. just triple hatches or something yeah, like that. I know. Like, what what, what do we broken. do? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> what do we do? Admins then? rush the stage. You're like, whoa, stop it. Stop. No. All right. Uh, all jokes aside, of course, we already know seven of our eight players for the Lone Star Clash Invitational quarterfinals. And there is money on the line as well. If you make it to the quarterfinals, you already walk away with $250, which is nice. You know, you can do something nice with it. But if you yeah. make it one round further, it already goes up really quickly. 1200 I believe, after that 1600 Then you already like, get like, almost 3500 And the winner of the tournament gets $7,500. So there is a lot of, lot of money on, on the line. And uh, one of these two players will still be in the running. Is it going to be our back-to-back -back champion, Stefano? Or is it going to be the new young gun from Root Gaming, Petraeus? Yeah, as you said, it's really cool storylines. I mean, everyone knows Stefano has uh, very clearly retired from pro gaming. A lot of people were kind of confused, like, well, why is he still competing? He was even asked this uh, upon qualifying for WCS, and he gave a pretty straight answer. He was like, no, I, I have time right now, so I play StarCraft. When I don't have time, I'm studying. So it's nice to see any games from Stefano is a treat, but on the flip side, like you said, the youngster, I, that doesn't even fully describe it. Petraeus moved all the way across the world to live in California in that Root Gaming house to take on pro gaming. And so far, he hasn't really knocked down doors. He needs a big breakout performance. And here he is on stage in front of 20,000 plus people playing against a legend in Stefano. And, you know, so far he's already made a name for himself. It's been quite nice, but what really pushes your name forward is wins. You know, he's, he's, people will be like, oh, Petraeus, I remember you from losing to Stefano at, at Lone Star Clash. No, Petraeus wants people to say, holy cow, you're that foreigner that made it to the top eight and then beat so-and-so and then made a run for the, you know, the, yeah. the tournament itself. Because you're only three best of trees away right now. Actually, you're one, one, one yeah. map away here and then two best of trees away or a best of five. I don't know exactly how it's going to work yet tomorrow from having a legendary run. Like, it all, that's all you have to do, you know? You, you win. Uh, we know that uh, Petraeus is pretty damn good ZVZ. I think his ZVT is really solid as yeah. well. I don't know that much about his ZVP, but anything is possible. The tournament is obviously really stacked. We have six Koreans in the quarterfinal. We saw EG Hawk qualify later today, and then it's either going to be one of these two players. But anything is possible. Once you're dead, close you know on this level almost anyone can win two or three series in a row and i you know don't take my word as official but i think it becomes best of five single limb tomorrow too okay. so i want to say it becomes uh I really like that format. I like single limb, but yeah, I only like is, single limb with best of five. I it don't is like best definitely of three, single, single limb. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was best of three or best of five, but I guess I think best it's best of five, but I could be uh. wrong. I've been wrong before. <laughs> it's happened a few times. Yes, uh, it Petraeus, happens on days like this. Yeah, well, a lot on days like this. Petraeus is final feeling each other out. Uh, again, the gentleman's agreement has long been exceeded, but so far they're both agreeing to do the same thing. So as far as we're concerned, six minutes into the game, it's looking very similar. Bane Ness, a few drones being eked out, but but, but Zerglings as well. Both players wanting to take this third game very seriously because as uh, Axel Toss and Kevin and myself have told you, that there's nowhere to go from here. This is the last series. This is an elimination series. The player moves on. Yes, indeed. Uh, no lay attack just yet. No static defenses on either side. Of course, it's always a tricky moment. Is one player going to make a lot of Zerglings and actually try to make something happen? Or are these bailing nests just defensive bailing nests? Yeah. And are they hoping that the other player is going aggressive? Either way, Jeff, two Overlords in production and 12 Zerglings. Are we going to see yeah. another big spell of Zerglings? And, and Stefano already with the kind of pre-made defensive banelings? The, an the answer is yes, by the way. Petraeus is going for it. He's got 10 lings coming out uh, on top of the lings you talked about. Very heavy in the ling category. And Stefano, 
It's going to come down to control, obviously. Yep. If, if Petraeus can execute the better micro, then nice. he'll pull ahead. But nice micro there for Petraeus. Doesn't yeah. lose one of those Bainings. Savannah is going to try to hide some of his Bainings off the high ground as well. The Bainings looking for a connection on these speedlings. Not getting one just yet, though. But it seems like Stefano has the pieces in the right wow. place. Yeah, the Bailey Nuts just ran all the way up there, but they don't get the connections they need. And, and with the, the Queen at the back of that, Petraeus' attempt to run up into the main has been mostly thwarted. Uh, supply is starting to oh. show. More Bailey's making their way up here, but one Bailey cleans up two. And another Bailey detonates in the middle line, but it's so far, Stefano with the favorable trade has eked out a, a slight supply advantage. Uh, but the real advantage here is the six drones up for me right now that I'm looking at. And, and well, it's a little bit of a seesaw, because as you can see in reply, uh, Stefano with 16 Zerglings in production. He might want to flip this around and try to be aggressive on the other side. Yeah, that's always the risk that you're taking. If you make a lot of Zerglings and you throw them at your opponent, you have to worry about that counterattack because yeah. after you make a lot of Zerglings and you throw it up behind your attack, but if you lose everything, uh, then you're still in a lot of trouble because then your opponent can just do the same thing. But look at this, Eunice lost reach step. It's so even. Uh, Stefano was defending pretty well. Petrae is also uh, executing his attack reasonably well. And we're still looking at a very even game where Stefano had a small economic late, but I definitely think this is something that Petrae yeah. can still uh, turn into something beautiful for himself. Oh, absolutely. It's such a seesaw matchup at this stage of the game. I mean, one player will be up six, seven, or even, you know, ten drones. And as long as they make a pretty standard trade, usually what happens is they take that drone advantage and they turn it into a, hey, I'm applying pressure to you. And, and then the other player uh, flips it around and makes more drones. This is where it gets fun. Petraeus is going to try to take the gold base. Stefano is going to try to do something about it. There are still defensive paintings over here. Petraeus has to be careful. He doesn't have too many Zerkings remaining. That, you know. Hashtag dicey here. Well, it's a little dicey. Stefano's third base is quite a bit quicker, but of course, if Petraeus, nice micro on that uh, cute little bailing. Look at him, man. Yeah. He's living on the edge. And I'll tell you what, uh, advantage Petraeus right now. So they're both going plus one range. They're both going roach speed. They're both going roaches. And while Stefano's third hatch is quite a bit faster than the third hatch of Petraeus, that advantage will leapfrog in favor of Petraeus if it goes on as, as we see it fit right now. I mean, the gold base, like I said earlier, is just so beneficial when you're both working with the exact same tools. Yeah, that's going to be extremely important. But I still think there should be a moment where Stefano should have quite a few roaches more because he has more access to larvae in an earlier stage. It's going to take a little while before that gold base is ready. And of course, this gold base is quite exposed as well. It's not like, you know, Petraeus can just run around and buy time for himself. The right. moment that Stefano is going to try to push his roach advantage, uh, maybe just when his plus one finishes up because his upgrade is behind of the upgrade of Petraeus. But maybe sure. right on the moment he gets plus one, he should have more roaches on the field. Well, Kevin, there's a lot of people that hope you're awfully right because uh, Stefano is a big, big fan favorite, but Petraeus and his fan base is hoping you're wrong. So we're going to have to see if Petraeus can hold on for that moment in time. If you look, supplies very similar. Stefano even warping it, or not warping, excuse me, warping <laughs> in a few banelings, looking to add a little bit of splash to this damage. Uh, but not a lot of Zerkings here for Petraeus. Petraeus with that concave. His hatch has just now finished. A couple of Zerkings going up there to try to do something, and nope. Stefano, if there ever was a time, he is going to back away. And if you look at that production tab, he still has even more roaches coming out. Yeah, there's a little bit of anti-timing there for Stefano. Right before yeah. his plus one finishes up, he also just made four drones right before the attack. And after that, he went back to roaches. So it's not going all that smooth for Elias. No. Uh, meanwhile, Petre is immediately firing up plus two, but he already has quite a few drones saturated on his gold base right now. If he hangs in there longer, like you said, that gold base is going to be extremely important for him. And he even feels comfortable adding drones here. We had four drones completed there as well, which I think is really bold, because yeah. the gold base alone, you would figure to be the advantage enough, but he's even going so far as to add drones here, and Stefano finishes up that plus one range attack upgrade, but is now going for two, and as you can see, it's a good 30 seconds or so behind, uh, even 40 seconds. Um, so Stefano, from this point forward, I mean, this will be interesting. One thing that you did point out, Kevin, that, that cannot be glossed over is that this third base does get you away from that natural. So if there is a way Stefano can get an advantage for himself, it'll be through his multitasking and hopefully trading favorably. Or Swarmos. Well, God, don't even sleep, <laughs> please. <laughs> Hydril is then actually going down in the main base of uh, Stefano, so that is not the point. Perhaps even Stefano got a little tired of that last game. But for Trey is right now, even with that second evolution chamber, uh, with that economic upgrade, he's eight workers ahead. And as you see, that's a massive difference, yeah. especially when you have a gold base as well. If this game goes on longer and longer, I think Petraeus is going to max out quite a bit before Stefano, and he's going to also do that on better upgrades. Yeah. Uh, Stefano also adding Hydrolisk. Like, Hydrolisk are awesome, but if you fight in a very wide open area, uh, play 
player that's maxed out on Roaches can actually get a better engagement than sure. the Roach Hydra player. But of course, if Roach Hydra stays defensively, which is perhaps what Stefano should do, then he should be able to get a much Ooh. better fight. Stefano actually wandering into the uh, concave here of Petraeus. It's not the biggest of deals as long as he doesn't lose this huge cluster, but I, I like a, a couple of things that happen here while you're describing that. Uh, Stefano is very much so in enemy territory, but he was unspotted, so it was really cool because if the, the blue Zerg moved out too far mid-map, these guys would counterattack. but then Petraeus did something I really like, and he fanned out his overlords to get more map vision. Stefano, uh, the noose is about to be oh, cold the roast, here. The roast. We've He's going to get stuck between a rock and a hard place. These roaches can actually just take the other side. No, yeah, yeah, there is still a little... Uh, they can block that whole hole. And uh, Stefano that knows that as well. So Stefano's indeed going to fight over here when he has more service area. Smart play there by Stefano. Oh, and at the, the same gold. time, he's going to snipe the gold base. Oh, Stefano with the play. Oh my gosh, this is exactly what we're talking about. All of a sudden, Petraeus is out of position. I like the idea in theory, but trading roaches for that gold base, that's 33 of the production. And now Stefano's countering into the natural, where there's, again, the roaches are out of position. Stefano still has to be covered. This is all awesome, but look at the supply. He's down 50 supply, and these roaches are going to be stuck as well. So those the roaches are basically going to be dead. And at the same time, we have Petraeus counterattacking on the other side of the map, so we yeah. see the bullseye on that. Stefano needs to do a lot of work with these roaches, and I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do it, though. Well, he's bottlenecking at the natural for right now, but there are so many roaches coming over, like you said, this third. It's being abandoned. If you look at that natural for Stefano, a whole lot of spine crawlers going up in Petraeus. Oh, that's actually really smart. With his ex, he's just, but Petraeus is playing really smart too. He spots it with the oh, overseer. I don't know if he has enough time to do anything about it. Yeah, the third's just gonna die. And Stefano's uh, routing the natural. Unfortunately, my game is stuck. So perhaps we can actually pause right Ooh. now. I have no idea what's going on, but my game just froze. Oh, uh, and I'm not a ref, so I can't tell. And the game is still actually going on. So, but right I now- I guess I just pause it? Yes. I can't. Can. Uh, you can. Uh, man, this game's great too, man. It's just, this, <laughs> yeah, this, this is, is the, killing. This is the most unfortunate moment. I can't actually do anything about this. Like the PC All right, just there's froze. the pause. We got the admin to do it. And Very obviously, good. the picture that we're pushing out to the audience at home, and perhaps even the audience here in the hall, is also being frozen. Uh, so I don't think my game can catch up anymore. I don't know no. how that would work. But when your you game has crashed, uh, yes. I think at best you would have to. Yours is frozen entirely. Yes. And yours is working, John. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if they can capture my screen, I think they'll go ahead and do that. We're going right. to do that right now. Guys, uh, instead of... I mean, we've had a long day of StarCraft, and this was <laughs> just like the last thing that could have also still happened. Your so. computer was already chugging. It was. I feel like it was that two and a half hours, like the graphical taxi, but I'm not even making a joke here. It was, yeah, it it was, was pretty slow intense. Down. Yeah. And it's hot here too, so I think that's what happened. But we're going to switch cables. I think we can capture from my computer. Uh, so it should just take a minute, which could end up being... Uh, it should just be a minute. So I think we'll go to a commercial break <laughs> as opposed to this. If you stop hearing my voice, you'll know. All right, thanks, guys. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. We're going to switch those cables. No, it doesn't. And 
Oh, I believe we are back. Yes, indeed. My PC is still working. It took a little while. I was 45 seconds behind it. There were roaches running all around the map. But both players are ready. We are ready. And we're going to pick things off where we left. Petraeus sent a lot of roaches at home. And at the same time, Stefano mossed out enough roaches at home. Uh, despite losing that third base, he did not die. And suddenly, this, this is a playable game again for Stefano. Considering the fact he yeah. was down 65 supply, this is not all that bad. You know, Stefano is down in... He's down in Roaches by quite a bit, but um, he has brought this game back, I think is a really interesting point, because to your point, he was down 40 or 50 supply is what it was looking. And it was like, okay, well, how the heck does Stefano overcome this advantage? Including that gold base, by the way, which was only going to get worse as it went on. Uh, in an equal field, again, so Petraeus is just out mining Stefano by virtue of a gold base versus a normal base. But yep. Stefano was able to find a way where he's equaled up the army to a certain extent, and he's uh, closed the gap in the economy as well. Yeah, he's moving into Hydralisk a little before his opponent is. I believe Petraeus is still only on Roaches, and yeah. Hydralisk are good, but not if the Roaches are able to stand on top of them. However, Stefano is idling behind the Great Wall of Ilias, <laughs> I guess. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Petraeus wants to test that Great Wall, as you said, because he also is closing in on having a two-upgrade advantage. Yeah. And it is armor, which is not nearly as good as attack, but there's still something very much so to be said for that. A two-upgrade advantage That's in huge. a Roach Hydra battle is a gigantic deal, and not a, not even outside of that. This Petraeus has the stronger army. Armory. I don't know, we're starting to <laughs> melt out of my head. This is a lot of HP, though. All these spine crawlers represent a lot of HP, and if you ignore them, they actually push out yeah. quite a bit of damage as well. Petraeus is going to try to retake his gold, while Stelfano is just going to try to retake his original third base. Yeah. He's going to fire up his first armor upgrade as well, but needless to say, it's going to take a while before he's even on upgrades. And Stefano, yeah, exactly. Like you said, he's trying to kind of close the gap there. He moves in and does see that it is the gold base that Petraeus opts to take, and once again, we're kind of in that position. Uh, I don't feel like Stefano made a mistake here. I, I feel like he did what he needed to to try to get back in this game and has closed the gap a little bit, but I think Petraeus, to his credit as well, played very smart. Why, why? Didn't overreach, by the way. I was really confused. I was like, I'm pretty sure I saw Hydras on the side of Petraeus <laughs> already, and now I saw no Hydras then, but he's going to cancel it, and he's going to throw down the infestation pit. Now, this can definitely be for Infestus, guys, so don't worry just yet. Well, yeah. yeah. It should be Infestors. He's in, a, he's in the position where you would think he would want to be the attacker and take advantage of the fact that he's ahead. He's maxed out. Stefano's closing in on that, uh, but still without that carapace upgrade, down two upgrades. Otherwise, if you look at the unit count, Stefano has way more, six hydra more hydras, but 20 less oh, that's roaches. Not a fight. That's definitely not the fight that Stefano should be taking. He's down in upgrades. Uh, it was a reasonable concave, but I feel there is just too much yeah. over here for Petraeus. Stefano is going to have to retreat. His tournament life is on the line right now. Again, guys, Stefano, of course, the champion of Lone Star Clash 1 and 2. Um, would you say the virtue of being eliminated? Well, it's looking oh, dicey. Yeah, absolutely. He's behind in every way, as far as I'm concerned. And it's Petraeus who's the big dog pushing around. Now, Stefano. Uh, I, I'm almost afraid to say this. Stefano wants time. He, he needs time. Petraeus can't crack this nut just yet. I feel like his best response would be to take a fourth and say, okay, Stefano, if you want to sit back and defend, that's fine, but you're going to be down uh, a whole base plus a gold base. Like, my gold base will outmine your normal base and force yeah. Stefano out of his comfort zone. I would love indeed to see him go up to four bases, even fire up that hive and fire up 3-3 three, three upgrades as well. Yeah, and as you said earlier, Stefano can't be taking these fights. He, he has no business doing anything about this. Um, but as time goes on, the upgrade differential kind of closes. We can see Stefano is starting his own pathogen lands as well. So if they're both going Roach Hydra, their upgrades equalize. Yes, the gold base mines out a lot more minerals, but we've seen this before from Stefano. If he can slow the game down, he's the guy that was doing a lot with Burrowed Infestors in games before and, and doing the kind of guerrilla tactics it takes to come back. I'm really worried about his army movement of Stefano, but I don't think he actually wants to fight, especially now with so much money and 25 free supply. Yeah. He's obviously waiting for his Infestors. Uh, he passed the 30 second mark, so he can make all those Infestors and they will spawn with enough energy to land at least one uh, Fungal Grove. However, this is not a very hydralisk heavy army, and unless the Roaches fight super clumped up, I'm not even sure if those Infestors are going to make the difference. Not... I mean, they're, they, they make the defense that much more powerful. Yeah. Like, if Petraeus tries to go in a choke spot, no, the no. Mega Fungals can make a huge difference. Yep. But even beyond that, if, if it is super tax and we're super hanging out back here, Stefano can go again into Gorilla Mode, just burrow those six, go back, and, and really cancel out some bases. But I'll tell you what, if I'm Petraeus, I feel like 
that trick worked last game, and this time I know now. Like, and, and we're starting to see that. You, you see spine crawlers all up and down that fourth base. He's already investing in the late game without going swarm host. So he's basically saying, I have an advantage right now. I don't want you to affect my economy. And when it comes to army fighting, with my better economy, I'll be able to replenish faster and with more units. More investors on the side of uh, Stefano, but attacking is still hard in ZVZ. Big fungus landing on both sides. This could be the deciding battle, but it should be relatively even. Actually, those Hydralists from Stefano are looking pretty good. Yeah, the Fungals are holding back the Roaches and just kind of keeping them out of the fight. And it was much better Fungals for Stefano. So as you can see, he's closed the supply margin. His army's going to win here. He does lose his investor behind this, but look at that production tab. It's it's uh, 28 Roaches for Stefano, which is great because there's not enough Fungals to really wow. keep them out of the fight. And he might get a gold base out of this. And if he parks at the top of that ramp, uh, I don't know if there's anything Petraeus can do about yeah, it. This is actually getting a little tricky right now. Of course, not, not that many Fungals left anymore. Fungals are okay for Petraeus, but his army is not here yet. Is Stefano going to do this after all? Petraeus is being overeager. He has no business trying to hold off this fight. He needs to just forfeit the gold and sit behind his own spine crawlers. But instead, he moves out, and it looks like he's going to try to engage again. But with the infested Terrans there, he would trade horrifically, and here he comes moving out into that concave. Well, Fungus will go down, but he just doesn't really have a whole lot anymore. He, does still, he still has...